Welcome back to the channel everybody. In the last video we set up footings and in this video we are going to actually place or pour the concrete. And there is a lot to go over so let's jump right in. You are looking at a top-down view of the concrete mixer truck. We are checking the mix to make sure that it came out exactly as we ordered. And by we, I mean Rai Rai 2 Reel, the pump operator. So Ryan is checking to make sure that that mix is going to flow nice and easy through his hose, that it's not too loose where it wants to run out of the footings, but it's not so stiff that the pump is working too hard. So the first thing Ryan does is he primes the hose and he blows that out once we start to have the concrete coming through. Well, now it's time to start. One of the first things that we do is we start at a step down so we can seal those off and get a sense for how well they're going to hold. And as you saw in the previous video with all the screws that we put into this thing and it all being two by six, it didn't even rattle. So as you can see, Rai Rai operates the hose. What that means for us as a crew is that basically we get an additional person. So Kyle and I, we use concrete rakes, the aluminum handled kind, because they last longer and they're a little bit lighter. And basically that's like a stand-up screed. Instead of bending over to rot off the concrete, we can just do all of that work standing upright. My job is to follow Ryan and get it close. And then Kyle's gonna dial it in so it's nice and level. And then Brian and Greg, they're using mag floats. They're just gonna smooth off the top of that concrete. So that's basically the process. No one has to work too hard. And like I mentioned in the last video, everything about concrete work is hard on the body. So having extra labor is a huge help. No one needs to overwork because guess what? We still have to strip these footings. We still have to pack panels, form walls, pour concrete for the walls, and then strip all of that. So. There's our thought process. We're trying not to kill any one person. <laughs> so many hands make the load light, so to speak. I personally think that one of the harder jobs is actually running the float. So having Greg and Brian be able to do that makes it really easy. Kyle and I poured a lot of concrete, just the two of us. So one of us rods it off and the other one trowels. And by the time we get around, we're beat. So it's nice to have a couple extra guys come out for just, you know, the two hours it takes to place the concrete. If you've ever run the line on the pump or the hose, then you know that Ryan is making it look way easier than it is. I definitely have a better appreciation watching this sped up after the fact. Notice that instead of dragging hose all over, he rolls it out and he pre-positions it. That way he's not trying to do all of that work as he's pumping the concrete itself. So what he's doing right now is he's setting up so that we can basically just keep rolling. So notice how he's holding it with his hands kind of leaning it against his hip, and then he switches and puts the hose over his shoulder. By the way, for those of us that don't run the uh, hose very often, over the shoulders is actually a great way to do it. Sometimes, sometimes we ask to do it, <laughs> just to give him a break and just kind of add one more thing that we know how to do. But anyway, he's making it look simple. Here's just a different perspective of what's going on there. One thing I love about working with Rai Rai is that it's like he's part of the crew. And it just goes to show that if we develop good relationships with other subcontractors, then everybody can just enjoy the process. Uh, because sometimes the process goes south and then, then you definitely want to be working with friends when it goes south. Like for example, we had a, a placement the summer before where the batch plant set trucks with hot mud. And that was a nightmare. We tried to make it work and then it was like, nope, take it back, we're not doing it. Not fun to do that. I'll talk about the line pump mix toward the end of the video. We fill up a sauna tube for a point load and, and then you're gonna really see the mix itself, even sped up at four times speed, which is what this video is right here. Notice that it's not just spilling out all over the forms, but it's actually holding itself. 
And that's part of the reason why we don't mind raising our 2x6 footing boards off the dirt for our 8 inch minimum grade. Rai Rai is watching this as he goes. He's making sure the rebar doesn't get knocked out. He doesn't fill up, or he makes sure that that pipe doesn't get filled up with concrete. He'll pick up and put uh, the rebar caps back on as he goes. You can see why we love working with Rai Rai and his dad, Paul. I, I know you've probably heard this story on other videos of mine, but they rescued us. We had 30 yards of concrete show up waiting, and I could not get a hold of our other pump operator. This was back summer of 2012. I remember that vividly. I called the batch plant, they recommended ABC Pump. I called them and they immediately left and came out and helped us out. And they have been our pump operators ever since. I love these guys. Oh, and I do want to mention that we almost never had to have Ryan give us a splash of mud. Notice Kyle's dialing it in. I get it reasonably close. It is always the right amount of concrete. So my camera is in Russian, even though the app's not. I've got the new GoPro 10. Yeah. I have no idea how I got it into Russian. Did you do a factory reset? Yeah. It's still Russian, huh? Yeah. You're gonna have to look up the, the menu and go yep. through it. So I'll just show this clip. It's the same section of footing. This is in real time. So just watch how Ryan handles the hose. And then as I come through and kind of level off the top of the concrete, push it against the forms and kind of pack it against. And then I'll show you at the end just how perfect it looks when we strip the forms. And then you'll see Kyle come through and basically dial it right in so that the guys running the mag floats, well, they can just polish the top enough so that we can snap lines and set clips. Here's a little better angle of the gap between the bottom of our two by six floating boards and the dirt. I get a ton of flack on Instagram every time I show these clips because people just think that there's so much waste and spill out. I've actually gone through and calculated. Usually, in fact, I'll show at the end of the video, if there's very much spill out, we just pick it up and put it in the footings. But those little globs there, it's about two five gallon buckets full by the time we run 350 or whatever this was, 340 lineal foot of footing. That's nothing. Don't overwork your guys for the sake of two five gallon buckets. There's a lot of work that would come into trying to fill those. You could fill your footings with plastic. There's some like the fast form system, which I would like to try. There's other ways you can do that, but to save two five gallon buckets of concrete, it is not worth any of that other labor. We work hard enough. Now again, that's just my opinion, but I think I'm right. Well, who cares if I'm right? <laughs> I'm just not doing it at this point, no way. So as you can see, this is a nice laid back process. Rai Rai's laid back, he's staying out in front of us. I'm able to operate multiple cameras and a drone and then jump in and run the uh, run the concrete rake. Kyle's nice and relaxed. Brian and Greg are nice and relaxed. It's a beautiful day. Part of that is, is because the truck driver is making sure we have a nice flow of concrete. And that allows Ryan just to focus on placement. Remember in the last video, and a lot of people don't want to use them, but those are those, I think, grab bar or snap bar. But anyway, the rebar holders, Notice that as Rai Rai, he's pumping concrete, that's not knocking over those verts. They're staying upright. That makes it easier for Kyle and me to work around as we're rotting off the top of the concrete. And it makes it easier for Brian and Greg to, to smooth out and flatten out the concrete with their mag floats. So just one of those things where it's not the initial cost of the product, but it's how it works through the whole process. Nice work, boys. Thank you. Okay, first 10 yards down. Take a few minutes, drink some water while the next truck comes in. Also, big shout out to DJI for <laughs> landing my drone perfectly while I forgot the battery was dying. Good job. Good job, DJI.
Pioneer Builders with the feather touch on the trowel. It runs that trowel like a 10 keypad. Greg is just full of rhythm. So this is where the drone landed out of our way, which was good. <laughs> that was the return to home point. But there's maybe just a little bit better perspective of the bottom of those footings. Such a small amount of spill out. We'll just clean that off as we run around and strip the footings. Strip the footings. Now, Brian and Greg's job here is just to float the top of the footings. They don't need to be perfect. We're not trying to polish them. It's all going to hide. However, we do want it to be flat enough to make it relatively easy to snap lines, set clips, and then ultimately set our form panels without having them rock and roll. So they can just kind of keep into a rhythm, just make it look nice and flat. Normally we would pour earlier in the day. We'd wait a little bit of time once we're done, and then we would go through and we would pop all the spreader cleats and we would trowel over that or float over that. I always say trowel, but they're technically mag floats. We didn't get around to that this time because we just poured too late in the day. Everybody's tired and it doesn't matter. But just, you know, if you were able to do this, if we had had an eight o'clock pour, we would have had plenty of time for that. As it was, I think we poured at 11. Of course, the batch plant is always late, so it's closer to noon. I think that's the time it was. And, and so by the time we're done, it's three o'clock. Anyway, you'll see how the process goes. We gotta come in the next week and do all this hard work, so let's not kill ourselves. I should note too that as we go through this, we all stay in communication. So if Brian and Greg, if their lower back just gets full of galactic acid and they get to that point, then we switch jobs. But everybody's feeling pretty good. This was only a two hour pour, so it wasn't too bad. But basically everybody, we're trying to like, I don't know, what would you say, like cross train? Where we don't want any one person doing the same thing all the time, but try and vary up what you're doing. And that way you avoid repetitive use injuries, or at least that's the idea. I got my eye blasted in concrete. It hasn't made anything easier. <laughs> in fact, it's made everything a little more not easier. Yeah. What is the latest with all that? Huh? With your eye. Because I haven't noticed you haven't done any stories. What's the latest? Um, it's basically a miracle that I've kept my eye. Um, Continually getting better, but slowly. Yeah. Um, there's still art, you know, superficial blood vessels, which means it's healing. Um, and there's not much to do but wait. Hurry up, wait. Yeah. I'm on a six month plan now instead of a. Three months. Yeah. I basically kind of get stuck tired of talking about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, stop talking about it. Yeah, stop talking about it, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, no one cares, dude. No, no, one, even, no one even cares, right, Ryan? Right? Let's talk mix design. This is a line pump mix. So it's six sack. So six sacks per yard of Portland cement, 60-40, 60% sand, 40% pea gravel with fly ash. This will test north of 4,000 PSI. How do I know? Because we've had it tested on two occasions. So again, notice Ryan is not really lifting up the hose but he drags the hose. And that is like, for any of us that have done this, I, I remember, I think it weighs like 15 pounds a foot. I remember the first time we used the line pump and I had to run the hose. I was like 20 years old and I lifted a lot of weights when I was younger. By the way, my personal 10 rep max squat was 325 pounds, 325 pounds. Coach Fisher back in 1997, he graded each one of those. So it's not like I'm super weak, but there is a trick to this thing. 
Yeah. She goes through the whole thing. I mean, it'll go on for minutes at a time. She's like George. Yeah. yeah. If, any, if any part of the conversation gets thrown off, he's yep. He's got to go he's away. He's got to go through it again. Yeah, he's got to re redo yep. it. I'm always like, who are you talking to? She's like, stop it. Just stop. <laughs> Tell him I said hi. Yep. <laughs> Oh, I thought he was done. No, he's gone. He, dude, that's a hey, okay. Come on, he's going, dude. Come on. Easy. Okay, sorry I freaked out. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's great. Will you just chill out? Man, chill. I haven't heard anybody berserk like that in a while. Yeah. Like at least an hour. <laughs> I mean. Okay, I'll go for a ride. Yeah, we're not done. We're done. Uh, well, I was looking to see. See what I mean about the camaraderie? Hey, by the way, Kyle's shirt is sweaty. That means he's been working. Oh man, beautiful fall weather. Just gotta love that weather. This video is not sponsored by SmartSide, even though we love to use SmartSide. Ironically, they don't want to sponsor videos on concrete work. Anyway, hey SmartSide, if you're watching, you know, you can sponsor us in the future if you want. But at least we got those free sweet t-shirts. Did you used to work at Dairy Queen? Never. Really? So you're so good at these? Like the upside down blizzard. Good job, guys. Ooh, I'll be careful with the fingers. It's okay. I bump it like probably 50 times a day. Is that why you got some padding on it? Uh, I didn't want it to get too dirty out here. Definitely. How bad is it right now? Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's it's definitely a little less sensitive than it was last week. Last week it was like, man. Don't even look at it. Yeah, I bump it a little bit. Just don't breathe on it. Just don't even, don't even breathe. Don't even blink. Not even for a second. Not even for a second. I got some of this little stuff too if you want to chuck all that in there. Yeah, what I want to do. What are you doing? Oh, I'll explain it when the camera's off. Oh. Not that it matters. Um, I want to leave a couple of them long. I'm not sure how that's going to... Ah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I'm so glad that was on camera. I know, me too. I was like, I can stab a hole right in it. Oh my goodness. That's good though. Now we know where to aim for the... Uh... <laughs> I wish it was wetter and it just went... <laughs> oh, you wish that, huh, Kyle? Oh, man. <laughs> think, you think that'd be really cool? Yeah, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> It would be. Okay. Because Timmy would be like, I just don't even know why I tried. I don't even know why. I, I don't even know. I would have liked <laughs> Why does anybody even do this? What am I doing out here? We got everything, here. right? Okay, so the story here is that I needed a bunch of rebar in a pad so that I could drill through it with the Diablo rebar cutting bit, which I recently posted to Instagram. So if you want to go over there and check it out, I basically just drilled right through the steel. It's pretty cool. This didn't quite go how I needed. And this is in the front porch, so this pier is going to get buried anyway. It served its purpose. So you want, Greg, Thank you for sacrificing your life, pier pad. Okay. And that will go way fast because we started at 6:30. Okay, so Kyle is Kyle's grabbing a bucket. Okay, do we have all of the cleats down here? I can turn this off. All right, 18 and a half yards of concrete. Probably had a half yard extra. So, not bad. Good job, Greggy. Good job, Kyle. Oh, yeah. Best friend. Rai Rai's got a little mannequin. I don't know about that guy. I can see the framer's footprints and what appears to be the finished carpenter's footprints. <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> Still going? So here's where it pays off that we went ahead and we reshot where our walls will sit. Remember in our last video, that was the last step before we pour. So we have nails tacked to all of our footing boards. So what Brian and Kyle do is they go through and from nail to nail, they're snapping lines with just a dry line, the concrete's um, still wet enough that they can essentially etch a line in by virtue of just snapping it. See that? They don't even bother rolling it up. 
So as they work their way around, then my job is to take buckets of spreader cleats and set them, and then Greg is putting a nail where he can just press it right into the loose concrete. So we're able to jump right to this step because frankly, no one wants to stick around, but it is nice to have the cleats all set. I think all told, this took like half an hour. I mean, we, we just roll right through it. So you see, I'm setting all the cleats. Once I get to a spot, then I'll work backwards toward Greg, or if Kyle and Brian get done, they can just grab like a stick of old rusty nails or whatever. It really doesn't matter. They, you don't have to take this step. It's just that we find it kind of sets us up for the next day, keeps those cleats in place. And I'm not sure why, but Rai Rai had a dummy. And so here's our obligatory droney, including the pump operator and his best friend, the dummy. Still not exactly <laughs> dressed in the orange shirt. Still not exactly sure what that meant, but it looks like a lot more people, but it's just us and a dummy. Yeah, I know. I know what you're thinking. Aren't you all dummies? Yes. Successful placement, no trucks broke down on the way in, the line pump didn't break down, nobody got hurt, none of the forms fell apart, the drone didn't crash into a tree. So that is a success. And look, it's not even messy. How's that for concrete work? And by the way, whoever gets to live here, beautiful view of that golf course. Man, just gorgeous. And the neighbors, super friendly. So one of our games is to always dial in the yardage as close to perfect as we can. This one, we basically got there. All that was left was what was in the hose. So we're not the type that order like maybe two trucks in a cleanup or one truck in a cleanup and then try to call in yardage. I try to order firm. So we go through and we try to get meticulous, but it's okay to have about a yard extra because it's just less expensive to have that yard and not use it than to have a bunch of guys waiting around for a truck that comes later. Uh, you professionals, I know you guys got it dialed in, but this works well for us, the, uh, the framers. Okay, so next day, or maybe two days later, I can't remember what the timeline was on this. It was time to go in and strip. We typically will try to strip, if not the same day, the next day. So here's where using screws really paid off. I am not yanking on anything here. I'm just letting the impact driver do the work and I'm putting all those screws in my pouches as I go. And as I mentioned in the last video, all those shorty pieces, they're all gonna get used for blocking. So we all just pick a different side, kind of spread out, turn up the music, and then everybody just goes to work. We typically pull all the nails or screws, whichever you're using. We pull all the stakes and all of the spreader cleats first and get those cleaned up. Then we strip the footing boards themselves and scrape them as needed, stack it all, clean up, take the drone shot, and then get out of there. So here's what that looks like in real time. Just kidding, this is, I shot this in time lapse and then I sped it up. What I want you to focus on though is that pile in the middle. We're all throwing our stakes and our cleats right there because then nobody's gonna step on them. Gets them out of our way. It also makes it easy that once we get to that point where somebody can grab a couple buckets and start organizing it, it makes it nice and simple. It's all about staying organized and trying to have some fun. And good music goes a long way. Kyle had a good playlist that day. Oh, I should mention that all of our, all of our footing boards are screwed together, but all of the stakes are just nailed with six penny duplex nails. So yep, you gotta use your hammer for some of it, but if you've ever pulled a six penny duplex nail out of a one by two stake, it's not exactly the hardest thing on the body. And then periodically as my pouches get full, I go grab the original bucket that all the screws came in and I unload my pouch into that bucket. Like I mentioned before, these are not structural applications, so we can just keep reusing the same box of screws. If you use duplex nails, it is cheaper, but it's one and done. When you yank those things, unless you're gonna pay somebody to straighten them, which you just throw them away, right? So we're thinking more about our bodies and a little less about the bottom line, but oftentimes those two things do go hand in hand. Okay, here is the better view. So this is where all the stakes and spreader cleats go into the middle. Quite the mess. I mean, that, that's quite a mess. <laughs> but then once we get to a spot, Greggy starts 
uh, loading up the buckets and getting them organized while we just keep stripping footing boards. Everybody's got a job to do. We all work together. It kind of gets to a point where all of a sudden it really accelerates and it starts to look clean real quick and then it's time to go. Try and stay organized by stacking everything according to its length or thereabouts. And then blow off the top of the footing. Kyle didn't exactly trust my uh, piloting skills. While it's true I am a certified commercial drone pilot, that doesn't mean I'm a good drone pilot. Another vantage point, here you can see we're trying to keep as many of our footing boards organized by size as we can. And there it is. Footings have been formed, concrete has been placed, footings have been stripped. We're all cleaned up. We are ready to go get some panels and start forming walls. So stay tuned for the rest of the process. Thank you for following along. Please hit that subscribe button. If you're so inclined, hit that thumbs up and maybe tap on that little bell. We will see you in the next video. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you.